So if you could be here around nine, that would be great. Okay. Well, listen here. Hello, and welcome to 90 Day Fiance MK Classic Edition. I'm Mr. O, and today, Miss H and I will be discussing Season 3, Episodes 7 and 8 of 90 Day Fiance. In these episodes, Kyle and Noon visit Kyle's mom, Mark and Nikki go to the beach and to New York City, Alexandra and Josh have bachelor parties and bridal showers, Lauren finds herself in some hot water, Carolina finally makes it to the country, and Melanie and Navarre are barely in the episodes. We'll also have our students of the week, class dances, and life lessons. Since there's no new 90 Day Fiancé episode on Sunday, we will only have one episode next week when we finish out Season 3. Also, if you watch Love After Lockup, please listen to our other podcast, Love After Lockup. Haha, <laughs> okay. You can find it wherever you find podcasts, or from the link in the show notes. Okay, stay tuned and enjoy. Hello, Mr. O. Hello, Miss H. How are you? I'm good. I'm pretty good. Um, how about you? Good. It's almost the weekend. Almost the weekend. Always, always yep. know it's almost the weekend when we got our classic episode coming out. Yes, that's true, huh? Right. So where do you want to start today? Uh, let's start with the couple. So I think everybody was in this episode, but some of them are barely mm-hmm. in it. So let's start with Melanie and Navarre because they were in it technically. So we should be able to get through yeah, them real quick. Right. Oh, yeah. I think I only have three lines of notes for them. I have three bullet points. Yes, exactly what I have. Yes. So I have uh, Devar says it's hot. This isn't Jamaica while they go running. Uh, I'm pretty sure Pennsylvania is generally cooler than Jamaica, right? Yeah, I was confused by his comment. Like, you've been running in Jamaica. How you consider this hot? All right. I don't know if it's just like the weird, like, humidity. Well, I'll tell you what you won't get that you get in Jamaica that you probably don't get in um, Pennsylvania is the nice, like, constant breeze. Yeah, I was thinking that. Ocean breeze. Mm-hmm, the ocean yep, breeze. Probably Which is not. nice and not nice when you're running, too. Because it's like, I feel like you're running one way and then it's hard sailing. You can't hear your music because the wind is blowing in your face. And you turn around, it's different. And you're like, I'm going faster. Actually, that's true. I did run a race in Hawaii one time. And uh-huh. you would think that it would be super beautiful. But it was really hot. And the other thing I remember was the wind. So I was running a Ragnar there. And so in the middle of the night, it's like you're running and it, it was literally like you were fighting against the wind. You would pick up your leg to move it forward and it would get blown back. Yes. So, yeah. I've definitely done like, yeah, bike rides and stuff where I'm like, why is this so hard? And then I turn around and come yeah. back and I'm like, oh, okay. This is not hard yeah, at all. This was nice. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So they do seem to be stressed and worried about money. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then they go wedding dress shopping, your favorite thing, and she's being mindful of her budget. If you're stressed about money, that's the best thing to do is go out and find I know. the most expensive thing you're going to have to buy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I was not a fan of the wedding dress she picked out, so I was kind of like, meh. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't especially flattering. Yeah, it was like a weird halter yeah. top. Like, eh, I wasn't, yeah. wasn't a huge fan. And I mean, she's a pretty girl, like... Oh, absolutely. She could have picked out something else that would have been way more flattering. I mean, even I get that some of these women are on a budget, but Mm -hmm. I feel like there's so many people nowadays who are buying just white dresses, like not necessarily like wedding gowns. Like Uh I actually do a lot of shopping on Lulu's and H&M, and I would say both of those places always have a white dress option that really could be a wedding dress like a more not as fancy wedding dress like not as much embellishments and things like that and you can get something for a hundred two hundred dollars and i feel like something like that she could get something really flattering right especially if you're having a little more like casual wedding or like a courthouse wedding it's you know yeah if you're going to the courthouse you can't you shouldn't have like a train that's weird <laughs> that's too much <laughs> yeah it seems like yeah bad fashion choice that <laughs> Might not work out, logistically speaking, you know. That's what I'm saying. You're waiting next to the people yeah. who are trying to pay their parking tickets. And <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Who do you want to talk about next? Let's go to Lauren and Alexi. Okay. Right. So we start off kind of dealing with the aftermath of the whole male model fiasco from last right. week. Right. Oh, she's such a stage mom. 
Yeah. We have, we have a reenacted or staged conversation where Alexi's like, I didn't like that. Can we please not do it? She wants it for him so badly. And he just says it's awkward and weird. And, you know, he yeah. just doesn't want to do it. And he's like, please don't make me do it. It just reminded me of like, you know, those stage moms, like forcing their kids into being a child model or a child actor Child singer, child prodigy, child entertainer. Uh, yeah, child beauty star. That's the one I think of, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, the pageant moms, dance moms, all of those. Dance moms. Right, yeah. right. You will do it. I am doing... How dare right. you tell me you don't want to do this? Do you know how much I've sacrificed for you? And it's like, that's not how this works. So I just... I felt bad for him. Yeah, I did, too. Yeah, he's just not about it. Yeah, and at least she, she ends up acknowledging that and be and saying we'll back off and we won't have we don't have to do the model thing i don't know i feel like it was all kind of not all kind of put on but you know somewhat put on like i feel like they were getting right it almost seems like production was getting into her ear and being like he really could be a model you know i mean he's very attractive yeah. right i think he could yeah do it. We, we, we're and we're in the entertainment industry this is the producers of course talking now so we know yeah so she says she'll let it go but she just wants him to be happy and then mm-hmm. he says, you know, you're annoying sometimes. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> he's got such a chill attitude that even when he says stuff like that, it just doesn't seem that bad to me. You know? No, it doesn't. Right, right. It's just he's kinda, just yeah. like, oh, you're so annoying sometimes. Yeah. He says it very, like, low-key way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a way that you're not like, he's like, yeah, you know, I'm telling you how I feel, but I'm not, like, trying to hurt. <laughs> this isn't, like, I'm not up right. blood here. Yeah, but he does get riled up about the potential of a crazy-ass bachelorette party. Yeah, yeah, he was not not about this bachelorette party. And at first, like, we didn't even see Lauren. He's talking to Rachel, Lauren's sister, about it, right? Yes. And yeah. I don't know. It just seems to me in, in, in this scene in particular, but in a lot of scenes, I know she's, like, in college, but she seems so young. Like she comes across she as looking so, so young. Yeah, she really does. Uh, but she must be at least 21. So I'm thinking right. she's like 21 exactly. Because she was able to drink at the bachelorette party. Correct. So he's concerned about them drinking. He's concerned about the strippers. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah, too much. So she's yeah. going to get out of control. And there's going to be stuff he's uncomfortable with. And, right. And then, and then our buddy uh, Sarah shows up. And Sarah seems like she's yes. the... Uh, ringleader. I guess. I guess she's the maid of honor, instigator. She's leading the charge of this bachelor. Her, she is the organizer of the bachelorette party, uh, and she's yeah. like weirdly judgy about Alexi, like right off the bat. She is. She doesn't like him from the very beginning. No, she doesn't like him at all, and it's it's weird. I couldn't figure out what it was she didn't like about him. Well, my take on it is that they definitely, you can tell, are really, really good friends, Sarah and Lauren. Uh And, you know, they even were saying, like, the yin to my yang. And they're the kinds of friends that are so tight that they finish finish each other's sentences. And Mm. they also seem the type that they're, they like a lot of the same things. And so Sarah is definitely projecting. You know, she knows that this is the bachelorette party that Lauren wants because that's the bachelorette party she would want. Uh And already she doesn't like Alexi because he's being kind of the negative Nelly, like the naysayer. You can't do this Mm -hmm. controlling. And she is not about that. So already she doesn't like this because she's thinking about it in the context of herself. I can see that. I can see that. But yeah, uh, I, I don't think she ever... Okay, did anybody ever promise not to go to the strip club? I'm trying to like mm. piece together if they did that. Because I think Lauren was like, Lauren made no promises because she was like, I'm not in charge. I don't know where they're going to take me. I can't promise I won't go anywhere because I'm not right. the one who's deciding. Yeah, I don't think any promises were made. But mm-hmm. Alexi definitely made it very clear that he would be very upset if it was happening. And right. so it was just kind of like, leave it like that. Leave it at that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But yes, you're right. She was very careful about <laughs> not making any promises because I feel like she knew. She yeah. knew what was going to happen. She knew right. her friend Sarah's she involved. She knew her friend well enough. And, and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What was what was most likely going to ha- go down. So, you know, 
they immediately go to the strip club. <laughs> At least right. that's the way they cut it. Is that it was like that was literally the first and only stop was the strip club. Well, maybe Sarah wanted to marry Lauren because before they left, Alexi says he doesn't want any strippers. And then he says it to Sarah specifically. And then Mm -hmm. Alexi says they'll have to get married to each other because he's not marrying her. (laughs) And so then that's when Lauren says, "Okay, I'll behave myself. Uh So I don't know. Maybe Sarah wants to get married to Lauren. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's why she's so judgy about Alexi. And she's like, oh, here's my chance. So, yes. Now we're back at the strip club. Lauren's excited. She is so excited. She really was. Yeah. Um, Which uh, that kind of made the whole thing weirder because you could see, you know, we were kind of going with what uh, what Alex was so nervous and upset about and what Lauren Mm -hmm. was simultaneously very excited about. Um, And so it kind of that, I don't know. Does this surprise you at all? You saw how Lauren was about seeing Alexi's abs. She clearly is into sure. a, a certain kind of body. So she yes. is all about that stripper life. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's definitely, yeah, very, mm, yeah, she has that 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 streak of objectifying male bodies <laughs> like, that she, that she, <laughs> she really gets into. She definitely does. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, there's always one in the group. And I think the person that I'm thinking about <laughs> in the group of friends that I know, it's like the surprising one. Like you would not have guessed that is the one who's like the first person who's like, yep, let's go to the strip club. But I feel like, like there's always one girl in every group that's like pro strip club. Like they would right. be there all the time if they could. Right, 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 right. Like we can only do this during bachelorette parties and it's a bachelorette party. So let's do it. Like oh, it's yeah. weird to go alone. Right. I'm not going to do that. A little, little too into it. You'd be like, oh, oh, Okay. So Alexi finds out that they're at the strip club. And so he calls Lauren and Lauren gives the phone to Sarah because she's just like, I don't want to deal with this. I'm like scared. Here, take Mm -hmm. it. And so Alexi just basically tells Sarah it's not cool. But he says it in his very unmenacing kind of low key way again. You know, it's like, it's not cool. Why are you there? What? But, But that's better than people who get like, like violently angry or like not violently yeah. angry, oh, I'm but, not you know, saying like that explosively so angry. Chill. He is very chill. And so sometimes, sometimes the chill vibe can kind of undercut like how serious he is about things. Like I could right. totally see some people interpret his, Oh, you're not going to go to the strip club. Are you as like, Oh, you're not going to go to a strip club, are you? Nudge, 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 nudge. Ha yeah. ha, that would be bad, nudge, nudge. When he was like, actually like, no, I really do not want you to go to the strip club and it will upset me deeply. Right, right. So Sarah, she just says, you know, Lauren deserves the bachelorette party she wanted. And if he leaves her over it, you know, maybe she just needs to find a new man. So I feel like Sarah is not sad at all if Alexi decides to leave. Um, no. I think it's funny that she says the bachelorette party she wanted because it's like, how did she know? Did Lauren say that? That's usually also something you say about the wedding and not about the bachelorette party. I don't know. I feel like yeah. I, 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 I of my personal opinion is I feel like the balance between like weddings and bachelor bachelorette parties is getting a little the ratio like the wedding's supposed to be much more important. And I feel like the bachelor bachelorette party keeps creeping up higher and higher. In terms of, like, importance. And it was my dream bachelorette party. That's not a thing people used to say. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I think people are just in a place where it's, like, whatever can be about them and just drag it on as long as possible. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, so that was it for them, right? Yeah, that was it. And then then we had, um, yeah, it was another more scene of Alexi talking about, talking to Lauren's dad about how upset he was Lauren was at the strip club. And dad was like kind of trying to be nice and trying to well you know and trying to you know empathize and diffuse mm-hmm. but he was also having a conversation with his daughter's fiance about her being at the strip club so yeah he wasn't the most oh poor dad this season poor right dad. i know poor dad i actually really like him i think he's you know a very stable person i i can't think of another word to describe it but he just seems like very even keel, uh, very down to earth. You know, there are things that obviously as a father, you would rather pretend aren't happening. Uh-huh. Uh, and I think he deals with it as best as he can without freaking out. 
That's true. That's true. He makes some jokes of cracks about it, but he's not like, yeah, I'm not talking to you about this. Ew. I like him. I do like him. All right, so... Uh, let's talk Fernando and Carolina. So Carolina gets approved for her visa, and so when Carolina tells Fernando, Fernando seemed a little over-the-top excited. And I don't know, maybe it's just my general skepticism of him, but I was just like, eh, that seems really fake. So now it becomes a frantic, yeah, let's get the house ready for Carolina. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, mom is not on board. (laughs) No, she's not. Mom is snarky. She's just like, uh, and then she does the thing where uh, she tries to like, she starts to like guilt trip him and like, Mm -hmm. oh, she's just going to come and call me the crazy lady. And, oh, I'm just going to, she's going to come here and I'm just going to disappear and looking for like fishing. for No, mom, that won't happen. We still love you. I don't know. It's that passive aggressive speech. I can't, I, I, it drives me crazy. Yeah, no, she definitely was. Uh, But mom is concerned that Carolina will run the house, which is why she's concerned about Carolina coming. And so she takes opportunities like the fact that Carolina doesn't like flowers to be like, oh, this crazy person. She, uh-huh. Who doesn't like flowers? I don't know. As a, as a guy who gives zero craps about flowers, that makes sense pretty normal to me. Like, like thanks. You know, because yeah. always to me, to me, I always did that, you know, logical thing of, yes, flowers are pretty and they smell nice. But it's always like, here, put this in water in your house until it dies. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> okay yeah i used to hate flowers because i thought it was such a waste of money and Uh so in that respect i was like oh but then i think maybe just in my life i haven't received flowers enough time that now i super appreciate them when i get flowers (laughs) which is very far and few between but yeah my younger years i guess when flowers were continuously coming Oh, I see how that is. Okay. That's when I didn't appreciate it. They were all, they were yeah. a dime a dozen. And then you're like, eh, way more flowers. Yeah. Now I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's flowers. I don't know. There's certain things you just start to, you just start to appreciate more when you get older anyway. Well, I think you appreciate it. The thought for me, I think back then I thought, what a waste of money. Can't you just give me cash? <laughs> and I think that was my thought back then. Like, uh-huh. I'd rather just have cash. You know, you spent like what? 30 bucks on flowers that are going to die. Can you just give me $30? I think I'd be happier with $30. That's what I thought about it back then. All right. So then we get all ready and then and Carolina comes. Um, uh huh. And no flowers because she doesn't like flowers. No flowers. Nope. But she got balloons. Right. It's not like sometimes they don't have flowers and it's like, yikes, you didn't bring flowers. But this is different because he expressly yes. said. I know her, and she does not want flowers. She would rather have balloons or whatever it is. Right. So Fernando points out how pretty she is, and then they're on their ride back, and Carolina is scared that she calls her mom Fernando won't like her. Uh, Rightfully so. I mean, not that that it's a done deal, but it's definitely something to be nervous about because having seen what we've seen. But I like, okay, I really do like that she played along with the mm-hmm. um the idea of trolling the mom and being like hi oh, yeah. i'm here i'm going to i'm in charge of the house now um you can go yep. live in the basement like <laughs> yes and, and i'm she here for the money and the I'm green here for card the money and the green card yeah yeah cuz that's what fernando says he's like oh you should tell her that you're here for the money and the green card so carolina sees the welcome sign outside the house and she gets kind of weepy a little teary eyed that this is all happening mm mm-hmm. mhm And then Carolina's struggling to communicate with his parents. And my thought is, why is mom being stubborn? Just speak to her in Spanish. Yeah, I I I thought the same thing. I don't know if it was production or her mom, but I was very, very confused why they were speaking in English. Like... Everybody's clearly fluent in Spanish and she's struggling to say, Fernando's translating for mom Mm -hmm. when she's talking, just speak Spanish. Like, come on. So uh, we get to see Fernando's brother, and I was like, oh, my goodness. The brother looks closer to age in Carolina than Fernando. Oh, I'm sure he like is. they would have been, yeah, they would have been a better couple, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. So mom is just, uh, she's just passive aggressive and rude. So she says she doesn't like Colombians. Yeah, she turns a corner and just becomes, ag- she just becomes aggressive aggressive when she says Colombians are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, and then she says, like, oh, they bring drugs into the country. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right. Yeah. That's the cocaine. All Colombians, they're just apparently made of cocaine. Like, everything they carry is just cocaine. That's how they bring the drugs in. That's how they bring the drugs in. Yeah. She's almost like, I bet your dress right now, made out of cocaine. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) It's really rude. And so, Mom Fernando is just... uh, Yeah, not the right foot. It's like, play nice a little bit. But Carolina, I don't say plays along, but she doesn't doesn't bite. She kind of stays... No, she really doesn't. Which is probably for the best. It'll be interesting to see how they get along later because it's like Fernando's mom can't keep on attacking Carolina and it being one way, you Mm -hmm. know? So it'd be interesting to see long term. Does Carolina at some point fight back or does Fernando's mom realize like Carolina, this this is just not her personality. So she just backs off. I don't know. I wonder. Yeah. We'll find out. Uh, I will also wonder because, once again, this is the couple that I don't recall don't remember. anything. That's right. That's no, right. No, I don't remember anything about them. I have no idea if they're still together. It'll be a surprise when we find out at the end. I have uh-huh. no idea. So yep. what, what I would remember, I feel like um, the most memorable thing I've seen so far is Carolina wakes up in the morning and she's not used to air conditioning. Oh, gosh, so yes. she wears a hat around I the house. I felt like I relate. Yep. She just wears, the, wears her uh, knit cap, knit hat all around the house all morning. Yeah. And I really yeah. wanted to be like, you know, it might make you a little bit warmer for the air conditioning is pants. Because she clothes. was wearing her, Yeah, just any kind of clothes. Yeah. She was wearing the tiniest nightgown in the world. Yes. Right. Like a little tank top, a cami, and like some pajama shorts. I don't even think it was boxers. that. I think it was like a nightgown that barely, like didn't even go mid-thigh. Like with the oh tank top goodness. top. Like it was like, that is technically pajamas, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So then Carolina decides that she's going to go snooping. So mm-hmm. she says, you know, if I find anything, I'm going to go home. It's like, okay, then why are you looking for stuff? Uh, I don't, what are you right. looking for exactly? Yeah. And if you, if you thought you were going to find something, you should just go home right now. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah, but he's actually cheated on her, so it's a legitimate concern. But yes. at the same time, like you said, if the trust isn't there, like what are you even doing? Right. I mean, because we we've said this before. If it, the only thing you're gonna you're not gonna convince yourself that he's above board. You're just gonna end up thinking you didn't look hard enough, and where didn't I snoop? Right. Yeah. But she does find something. She finds underwear, which it was a very odd pair of underwear. Like, um, it, this is what it looked like. It looked like it could have been some girl's underwear or some dude's underwear. Like, it was kind of, what, it, unisex? Yeah. So I actually thought when she did it and he was like, those are from yours. My thought was that those were his. And, like... He didn't want to say they were his. He was cool. He was like less embarrassed to say, oh, no, those are just those are just panties that were buried in the bottom of my drawer years ago. (laughs) And from some girl, I can't even remember who it was, Uh, but they seem kind of big. I don't know if they would fit him, though. Now that I was going to say, I I would think, too, that if they were his. okay, fair enough, because I could see, like I said, they looked kind of unisex. They looked like uh tidy whities except they were like neon pink or something yeah yeah they weren't like super like revealing or anything for panties Definitely no not. they weren't no and but i was gonna say that maybe fernando when he was a kid could have fit in them because they mm-hmm. were still tiny i mean they were stretchy because she kept on like stretching them out but they yeah were, i think that was the thing she kept stretching things. them out but yeah he could, I don't know. I wonder how much weight he's gained, how fast. He is not fitting in those things. He's a large guy. Like, no way. Maybe 10 plus years ago. Okay. Maybe, why did, if that. Okay. Either way, whatever it was. So he can't fit into him now. Or they claim, why is he keep, why did he keep him? I don't understand. I have no idea. And I was going to say, I felt like she didn't have to dig that much to find them either. If they right. were really, you know... In the recesses of his dresser, like, how did she find them so easily? So, I don't know if you had seen uh, Jonathan and Fernanda, uh, but they pretty much had an exact same scenario happen on their season. When Fernanda came to uh, to stay at Jonathan's house, 
like okay. immediately finds a pair of thongs in Jonathan's dresser. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, and that was like a whole storyline for a couple episodes. So it's kind of like okay, this obviously happened before Jonathan Fernanda, but it's kind of like oh, recycled stories, yeah, and staged because it's like where did this underwear come from? Right. Yeah. It totally could it was have just been just laying on top. That totally could have been somebody from production who was just like, yep, yeah, because I don't, yeah, because you wouldn't keep for ten years, or your your Jonathan Fernando one, like, if you knew they were coming and they were going to be staying in your room, like, you clean out the drawer. Yeah. Come on, man, everybody. Right. He was like, oh, I just never used that drawer. It's like, uh huh. So this random drawer just had one thong in it. Uh huh. Right. <laughs> like that's really suspect. Right. So she believes his story reluctantly, mm-hmm. and then they go out with his friends. I didn't like his friends very much. Like, it seemed like his friends were dirtbags. That was the word I put down. I don't down. like him very much either. No, I don't, but it like seemed birds like... of a feather. It seemed like they had a vested interest in him being the this, uh, sketchiest one in the group. And, like, so like for, they well, kept him around for being like, yeah, but at least I'm not... Fernando. Fernando's a, a, a skeevy guy. I'm not skeevy because I'm not as bad as Fernando. And they don't like him getting married yeah, and that's true. taking that veneer away. Okay, this is what I don't understand. So he bashes his friends for being married and it's like, dude, you were married too. Like, from, right. uh, Carolina is not your first wife. So mm-hmm. you can't hate on married people because you've already done it before. And I just was very confused by that. So then Glenn and Monica, they say that they have the perception that he would never get married. And it's like, once again, he was he married. Why is everybody forgetting this? Married. <laughs> I guess it would make sense if they said he he, uh, he would never get married again. Right. Especially yeah. the way because his because his marriage, you know, ended with him cheating. Like I could totally right. see them saying, well, no, there's no way he could ever settle with one person that that obviously didn't work. So I couldn't see him doing yeah. trying that again. But yeah. Uh, ridiculous i know right <laughs> uh who do you want to talk about next uh let's talk about uh kyle and noon they visit a buddhist temple which made noon miss her family so they can't come to the wedding because of visa issues once again it's one of those things where i am surprised and i'm not saying it's not believable or it's fake mm-hmm. but i'm surprised at how many family members can't come because of visa issues because it's not like they're asking for a visa to stay forever no it's a visitor you know, or visa. even long term yeah. yeah it's a visitor visa like even if you were to say 30 days i mean yeah. i don't understand why that's that is so difficult for so, so many people yeah for so many people right yeah, for a lot. And, you know, it's funny to me, too, because there are certain countries where it's a lot harder to get to than others, like off the top of my head, Vietnam being one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Thailand, it's like you could just show up, you know, and they'll let you in. So it just seems funny to me that right. they're so welcoming of visitors and then they can't come over here. That okay, just but seems. I'll- I'll Odd do it. The, I'll give you the opposite example: the country where if you mm-hmm. come from this country, I guarantee you have no problem getting in, and it's actually really hard to get a visa to. Is New Zealand? I uh, I've been to New Zealand. I don't even remember the visa process really? because I think it was really easy. Yeah. Oh, because I, when I took uh, this, maybe it was a while ago. Because I remember my grandma had to, like she went and she took it. It was a, it was a months long process to get a visa to New Zealand. I don't know Australia. I didn't. I literally showed up and said passport. Stampin'? Okay, so the countries that I recall there being something a little bit different is Australia, actually. Really? Um, and Australia, you could do everything online. It's not a big deal, but you have to get a visitor visa before, and I think it's like 20 US dollars or 25, something like that. But, I mean, the ones where I have to do something like pay or apply or do something for, those are the ones I remember because mm-hmm. it's like, why did I have to do something extra? New Zealand, I don't remember doing anything for New Zealand. I Once again, it was one of those things I just showed up. Um, Vietnam was like a big thing because I think I had to go to the embassy when I was living in D.C. I went to the embassy and it had to submit like passport pictures beforehand, mm-hmm. which was kind of crazy because it's like I have to go get passport pictures just to visit a country 
Like, it just seemed really weird. And then I remember when I was there, it was like, you had to sit and wait. It was almost like you were at the DMV. It was so terrible. You had to sit in this general waiting area until they called your number. And then they took your visa application. It was like this whole process. But every other country that I can recall is just, like you said, just show up. Not a big deal. All right. I, I think it has mo- much to do with, I think when you're looking at it from the U.S. end, it, it's basically a, 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 st- a numbers game on, okay, how many people from this country overstay their visitor visa? And if there's a mm-hmm. significant number that do that, okay, now we have to have a process and now we have to actually screen it. So I wouldn't be shocked if, if Thailand was a country where people tended to overstay their visitor visa when they got it. Um, but I don't know. You never know what the families are doing because um, the other places we've seen have people have trouble with Russia. Well, that makes more sense to me. Right. Um, but like South Africa, people didn't seem to have any kind of trouble. Trouble. Apparently, because Amy's whole family ended up showing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Noon wants his family come to the wedding. Uh, and so Kyle, he is so odd to me. He doesn't actually talk about his parent situation, or at least he's not super truthful. He just yes. is very vague when explaining it to her. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if he was just honest that she would understand. But uh-huh. instead, they just show up and go to Minnesota to reconnect with Kyle's mom. Drive to Minnesota to connect with yeah. Kyle's mom. And all he was, like you said, it was very cagey about it. Like, oh, she has yeah. a problem. Uh, you know, she's not well or stuff like that. And like, yeah, I feel like he didn't even say problem. He just said, oh, she's not well. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he, he didn't really say much. And so, you know, poor noon is over here thinking like Kyle's the bad guy for not wanting a relationship with his mom yeah, and not realizing that there's a situation around or a reason why he doesn't want a relationship with her. He mm-hmm. just think she just thinks that he's just being a bad son. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't understand why you wouldn't, that one, every good son would want to talk to their mom. So they drive to Minnesota. And what the problem is, is his mom's an alcoholic. And yes. instead of explaining, my mom is an alcoholic, she has a drinking problem. I can't be around her anymore because, like, it's too much. Like, they just go see. And he's going to show her for himself, I guess. Timeline wise, it appears that, because uh, Kyle, I believe, is 28. And he says oh. that he hasn't talked to his mom in 10 years. So basically, as soon as he could move out, he did. And he just hasn't talked to her since. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, yeah, it just seems like it was really hard to watch. Like when the mom was around. It was. Mm-hmm. Like it was super hard to watch. And it she wasn't necessarily, she wasn't abusive in there. But she was. No. Know, she, she was, she was gone. She was like not all there. And you're just kind of embarrassed for her mostly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So it's it was just hard to watch because you know that she, things would have gone differently if she wasn't drunk, and she mm-hmm. was. I mean, when you, oh, she, yeah, they she first got there, she was maybe a little buzzed, a little bit more coherent at the beginning, uh-huh. and you know, even then, she did seem off to me. Kyle was yeah. worried that they wouldn't click again. She was just happy to see him. Uh, she kept on talking about the fact that he got a haircut. It was like that was ten years ago, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, when they first got there, haircuts. she already she already had the shakes. Like she was like, yeah, it was. Yeah, she was in bad shape. Yeah, right. And, so Noon and, and, actually, I don't think gets what's happening. She's just like, I feel awkward because something's wrong, but I feel like Noon didn't get what it was. Yeah, I think she did eventually, but it took her a, a while. To figure out what it was, which is on Kyle. Like that's that's a situation that you yeah. got you got you to gotta help you got to help people out with. She definitely was surprised by what was happening, and I feel like front loading the situation, Kyle would have really saved mm. Noon from being shocked because I feel like Noon was really surprised. She didn't know what to do. She didn't know how to take it. Right, right. But yeah. at least, but I mean, at the end of the day, she did understand where Kyle was coming from yes and why he hadn't talked to his mom in 10 years right so Lisa is uh Kyle's mom she thinks noon is sweet but then she goes on to say you know are you there for a free pass you Mm -hmm. know I know about these oriental type wives and it just oh so much cringe I know here's a life lesson for those of you who don't know 
Oriental should refer to a train and a rug only and yeah. nothing else. Not a people. I feel like there's yeah. something else. I mean, obviously not people. Like No. Never people. You no, know, because you would still say, they don't even say like, they don't even use Oriental and Occidental to refer to the, like civilizations anymore. They usually just say Eastern and Western. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's right. I'll give you that. Rugs. No. Express. Rugs and it. trains. That's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yep. <laughs> Oh, but mom is just drunk and slurring, and mm -hmm. it's just uh, very hard to watch. Probably yeah. another 10 years yeah. until they see her again. Yeah, unfortunately. So, yeah. I'll leave them on yep. that. Let's go to Mark and Nikki then. Okay. You want something a little more uplifting? A little, <laughs> little more, I don't know, upbeat. I don't Higher know. energy. Higher energy. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. So Mark is forcing Nikki to decide if she wants to have kids. And I feel like that is such a weird thing to want because she's really young and you're basically asking her to make a final decision, but it doesn't have to be a it, final decision. It doesn't. It doesn't. It, it's, no. yeah, I mean, she's, yeah, she's way too young to decide now forever if she ever wants to have yeah. children. That's not, right. yeah, that's not something, it, it, even like a guy, it'd be really weird if a guy got, you know, um, what's the, why can't I think of the name of it? A vasectomy? A vasectomy. Yeah. Why have a guy got a vasectomy at 19? Like everybody be like, what's wrong with this guy? Like that's making a final decision about babies. I'm pretty sure you can't get a vasectomy. I think there's like a minimum age requirement. And I want to say it's like 25 or something like that. I want to say that because I feel like I knew someone in college who was all about that <laughs> and yeah. they had looked into it. But once again, I think doctors like recognize like, yeah, you're 19. You might make a hasty decision if you have the money to kind of throw at it. Uh -huh. And then we don't want to have to be doing the reverse at some point. So we'll yeah. just say minimum age. Yeah, I'm trying to think about ages and stuff. I've definitely known... Not 19, but I've definitely known people who are not very much older than 25 that were like, nope, mm -hmm. I'm doing this now. Like, and people who right. are like unmarried and uh, had, had nothing, they're like, nope, I'm, nope. Right. And they, they almost kind of did it like as like insurance of the future. So that like if they ever did marry somebody, they were like, just so you know, this is off the table. This is not going to happen. So that's interesting that you should say that because I feel like that should have been Mark. You know, it's like after yes. he had the. Four kids in diapers. Yeah, yeah. I feel like he should have, after that, been like, nope, vasectomy. I am taking the decision out of your hands. Right. All future women. You know, like, I know I don't want this for my life. That's true. That, it, that would make a lot more sense than what he's asking of of Nikki. Now that you say that. I, yeah. Yes. Okay. That's weird. But who knows? I mean, it's one of those things where Mark could have had a vasectomy and they're just saying all of this for storyline. True. Also true. Yeah. Also who true. knows? Because he seems the type that would. Because he does seem very anti-child at this point. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, understandably so. It's totally fine yeah. for him to personally, for right. his life, not want any more children at 50. Yes, because he's older. Yeah, he's older. He's already done it four times. Yes. Like, you've, you've contributed to society. I think you're done. <laughs> and then Nikki wants to talk it over with somebody, and the only person she has to talk it over with is poor Elise. I know. Poor, poor Elise. She does not want to hear about her dad's sex life or her dad's raising other kids. Yeah. She wants none of it. She wants none of it, but she's a good sport. Yeah. So they go shopping in Fells Point. And they go to the shop, the shop place, and they talk about it. Who's getting married? But I just liked really like that Nikki was like, they, she asked, so who are you getting married to? Who's your fiance? And she's like, I'm getting married to a weird guy. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny too. It's like, uh, that should tell you something. <laughs> but then Elise agrees. Yeah, dad's yeah, weird. Yeah, he's pretty weird. Like, oh, and eventually God. she was like, I, I love him, but he's, he's really weird. <laughs> so Elise thinks that Nikki doesn't really talk when she's around Mark. So Elise likes that, you know, she gets to get to know Nikki a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And Nikki's happy about hanging out with people her own age. It's yeah. Like, oh, God. Yeah, which is, it's weird. <laughs> it's, yeah. So it's things weird. don't seem to be good in their world. Mm -hmm. They haven't talked for a day, and she's just trying to give him space. So it's kind of like 
I wanted to ask more questions. Like, why haven't you, was there an argument? Mm -hmm. Like, something that motivated this situation? Or is this just like a, oh, I didn't feel like talking to you for a day, so yeah. I'm okay with silence. Yeah, and some people are okay with silence. I, I would appreciate yeah. a relationship that where sometimes it's just okay. I can't imagine going an entire damn day, though. That's weird, now that I'm thinking about it. If you live in the same house with somebody, just not a good morning, not a, what do you want for dinner? Like, nothing? I could get not having a big, long conversation, but... Like right. to not to we didn't speak at all is like then you're going out of your way to not speak. I don't really know how to take that, but Elise feels that it's up to her dad to make Nikki feel loved. So I kind of feel like it's Mark's fault. <laughs> you know, Mark is the one who's kind of OK with how things are and mm -hmm. doesn't seem to want to make amends at all. And so. Elise kind of interprets that as, you know, Mark should make Nikki feel more secure, make her feel loved. And, okay, so he tries to, and his yeah. uh, solution is they're going to go Danny Ocean. Yes. Go Danny Ocean to, to Ocean City. Ocean City. Yeah, yeah. For the weekend. We were just talking about Ocean City. I can't remember on which podcast anymore. Oh, it was it was on the regular episode. Uh, okay. Yeah, earlier. And I was like, as we were talking about it, I was like, oh, man, we blew yes, our lot. we were talking about that and Julie Fish. <laughs> yes, and the jellyfish. <laughs> and the jellyfish. Well, yep. and she was not used to Ocean City because Ocean City is, as we discussed in the other one, a very popular beach. Crowded. It's a very crowded yeah. beach. It's it's more of a boardwalk bar, ro roller co like you know, there's amusements and roller coasters and carnivals. There's there's yeah. beach, but it, people don't really go to Ocean City for the the relaxing day on the beach as it is um which is very different than the beaches they visited with in the philippines which seemed to be like one of those beaches where you know you and you sit on the beach you lay in the sand and there's you don't see anybody for 100 yards to your right you don't see anybody for 200 yards to your left and you like have the whole thing to yourself because nikki even makes a comment about it like no these are not like the beaches in the philippines mm -hmm. and she doesn't like it so yeah. he keeps on bringing up other women. Nikki gets pissed. And then she <sighs> just says he's talking about the past like a broken machine. I was like, yes, he is broken. And that's but the thing is, is that's what 58 year old men do. They have such a long past that they talk about yeah. the past. Like, even if it's right. not like romantic stuff. Oh, my God. Haven't you ever gone to like, you know, your your parents and your like aunts and uncles are sitting around talking and they're talking about about the person that moved into the neighborhood 50 years ago and what happened to their oh, car. Gosh. You're like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Yeah, do you remember that one person? <laughs> yeah. They had that car. What was his name again? What was his name again? Oh, yeah. And then their sister dated so-and-so and, and like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just becomes this game of who can remember what, <laughs> but there is no real point to any story. Any of the conversation, yeah. And so I feel like right. that's what it is. There's so much that happened in his life that like, and if he was dating another, somebody his own age, they would do the same thing and they would understand each other's past. But like, it's just somebody who has is basically on the recapping part of their life and she's on the just starting yeah. part of their life. It doesn't match. It doesn't match up. But it is weird right. when he keeps bringing up specifically women. Like, not just that he had a surfing lesson and he had fun during a surfing lesson. And not just that he had a surfing lesson with a woman. He calls her a beautiful woman. Like, what? Why? Why would you do that? Uh, yeah, that was super cringy. Well, she reminded me of you. Like, oh my God. Stop. Oh my gosh. I know, right? Speaking of cringy, he did the thing that we also just oh. talked about. He told her, you're supposed to smile more. And then he tries to poke her. He's like being an annoying dad type at this point. It's mm -hmm. like, stop it. Get you to laugh. I'm going to get you to laugh. Yeah. That's so something a dad would do to his daughter. It's like, oh God. Yeah. They're in the car and she's playing the role as the kid. You know, she's like, are we there yet? I was like, that can't be real. People don't actually say that. Are we there yet? No, because most people can, if you're an adult, you should be able to figure out how far. To, I mean, on the way to Ocean City, I mean, which is not a short drive. You think, oh, it's a beach. It's here. It's still like a two and a half, three hour drive to get to Ocean City. Sure. Um, once you get across the Bay Bridge, it's just endless signs that tell you how far away Ocean City is. Like, you can't not know right. how far away you are from Ocean City. I wonder if Nikki knows how to read. Just ah. in general. Interesting. Because Especially with the books last week. It just doesn't week. seem... Yeah, because it's it's not like in the U.S. where everybody has to have at least reached a certain 
age and schooling, right? Mm -hmm. So in the Philippines, I don't know if they have like public schools in the sense where everybody has the same kind of schooling and everybody knows how to read. Yeah. Because, for example, I'll say in Thailand, uh, Thailand, uh, public school only exists up to sixth grade. And then past sixth grade, you have to pay private schools. And so a lot of people can't afford it. And so you only have a sixth grade education. So I'm wondering a little bit if Nikki has little education. Uh And I mean, and reading would not be her first language. Or sorry, reading in English. In English, sure, sure. She yeah. used the Tagalog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. It says it's like 97% literacy rate. But you're right. The English thing could be could be a different... Whether she's literate in English is a different question. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. She can right. read the signs. She can tell how close, how much closer we're getting. It's... Well, then we also have the issue of kilometers versus miles, right? Right. So if she doesn't know how to do that conversion... If she saw the sign and it said 90... Right. You'd be like, that's not that far. And it's like, no, it's like double what you're thinking. <laughs> it's almost double what you're thinking. Yeah. Uh, I hate that they went to the beach because it's more opportunities for seeing Mark's back hair. It's and like, this stop. time the back hair is matted and wet of salt water and just extra. Uh, mm-hmm. Gross. That description was worse than the image, <laughs> Mr. O. <laughs> <laughs> Cause, okay. So to be... <laughs> I, I don't go to Ocean City very much because I'm not a big fan of the crowded beach, right? But mm-hmm. that's, he was like trying to boogie board. And that seems, that's like a no, that's, no, stop. Like it's too, <laughs> it's too crowded of a beach for grown ass man to be trying to boogie board. If it's a kid who's trying to boogie board, all right, it's okay. It's not even a grown ass man. It's like an older man. An old man trying to boogie yeah. board. Like stop. This is too crowded. Too many swimmers and jellyfish and stuff. Yeah. So I appreciate that Nikki finally gets the nerve to confront Mark about bringing up the past and comparing her to his ex. Mm -hmm. And at first he denies it. And then she says, well, what about? And she cites specific examples. (laughs) And then he's like, oh, I guess I do. And I appreciate that he actually said he'll work on it. We'll see how successful he is. But I think it was a good thing for Nikki to confront him and for him to be receptive of it as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Then they do your favorite thing. They do. This is the weirdest, the weirdest dress shopping thing. Oh yeah, because she doesn't have any. She has yeah. No she doesn't have any buddies concept. or anything. Friends. Yeah. Uh, well, she can't do the buddy thing. But I'm like, her original plan was to buy a wedding dress online for ten dollars. Yes, which is like, even the wedding shop lady was like, you can't even get a towel for ten dollars. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, I don't know what you ordered online, but it is not going to be what you're going to wear at this wedding. No. There's so many of those uh, things about, I can't recall any of the site specifically, but I want to say Zulily possibly, but it's uh, basically this fashion and uh, you can buy it online and it comes from China. And so Mm -hmm. it never looks like the pictures. Oh, sure. And it doesn't ever fit like the pictures either. So there right. was this one really funny, I think it was a BuzzFeed article where she, this lady had bought all these things and then she ended up giving it to her seven-year-old kid because her seven-year-old kid looked fabulous and everything, uh-huh. but, you know, it didn't fit her at all. Yeah, I feel like there's a few, like, Instagram accounts that are like that. Like, here's what it looked like online. Here's what they sent me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I feel like a $10 dress would kind of fall in there. Definitely. Rose Gal, I think, is one of them. Maybe it's a maybe yeah. it's a Barbie dress. It's gonna come. It's gonna be that. It's gonna be right, right. It's like not shown to scale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So yeah, instead so... of taking the five the ten dollar dress, Mark wants her to splurge on herself. Yeah, as he takes her to New York, which is I don't know. I feel like of all the places to go, there's got to be some nice boutiques in in DC, right? There's plenty of money in DC in Bethesda, like Potomac. Come on, there's got to be plenty of. Splurge. But let's be real here. I don't even think it's Mark's goal to buy a super expensive dress. Like, that was not the goal. It was just to buy a wedding dress that wasn't True. $10, yeah. was how I interpret it. So why are right. you going to go to New York? Because that seems like the markup, just because you're in the city, seems like a bad, I don't know, choice. True. True. Well, you have to, you have to take her to New York before too long, just because you don't come 
all the way from wherever you come in the world to go to be 200 miles away from New York and then not go to New York. Like they're going right. to somebody there's going to be an agitation to go to New York at some point. Yeah, I can understand that. So I thought it was she was in a difficult position Nikki was because she didn't have any friends there, so really the only person she had to rely on was the wedding dress lady. And the wedding mm-hmm. dress lady, she's just trying to make a sale at the end of the day. Right. She's trying to talk her into this. She and doesn't care up. if it right. looks good or not. She's like, well, is the dress expensive? Let's sell her this one. Mm-hmm. And you could kind of tell that was her mentality for it. Mm-hmm. So it's no surprise. Mark is waiting outside. It's no surprise that Nikki... Uh, gets sold on a $2,300 wedding dress, and she needs Mark's approval. Uh-huh. Well, at least they didn't sell her on the one that had the buttons on it that the skirt popped off of. That just seemed really... Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, it, didn't do, it didn't really yeah. seem, scream classy to me. That you're like, there's snaps on this one. It comes off. Uh, my take on this is that uh, Nikki, I think she's... I wouldn't consider her a gold digger. Mm-hmm. I do think she's, I don't want to say lazy, but she's kind of like Jasmine from this season where she's perfectly fine not working and mm-hmm. she has no real ambition to work. And so in that sense, her being with Mark makes sense, but I don't think she is necessarily seeking out spending money, but she doesn't mind if money is being spent on her. Yeah, sure. I mean, she just... It, this when this being convinced of a twenty three hundred dollar dress and being sold on it and I love it so much and mm-hmm. I don't know she she seemed this is one of the scenes where she seemed the most childish right because we've seen yeah. like and what 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 I actually had thought just recently is you know even in the re- most recent season we have you know Anna and her kids and there's that Joey mm-hmm. she's like three years older than Joey oh God that's so scary to think of. Right. That's so creepy to think of, actually. She's a child. Like, she, she really is. is in so many ways. And especially which it doesn't seem like she was exposed to all that much stuff. And if she is, low, you know, doesn't have the education like you imply, mm. she's really like it is really, really creepy because she seems so, so childish. Yeah. Because that's what it yeah. seemed like. That's what, it did, she didn't strike me as a gold digger. She strikes me as more no. like a spoiled child. Yeah, I could see that. Like, you know, and... Sure. She doesn't want to go to school. She doesn't want to work. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Mark comes up from the street, and he sees her in the dress, and once he finds out how much it is, he's, like, trying to talk her out of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, oh, well, do we really need this, you know? And then Nikki says that she just sees it in in his eyes, that the answer is no. Mm -hmm. So... Then she gets all hesitant and, you know, she isn't very forceful. So she lets Mark get out of having to buy the dress. Right. Right. I mean, he had decent points, too. And he was trying (laughs) to not say no, but also kind of make the points. She wants to get married on the beach. That was not a beach dress. It didn't work. Like, you can't have a long gown that's dragging through the sand on the beach. Well, you can. But twenty three hundred dollars is like yeah. so. Basically, you're ruining a dress. Yeah, yes. that part I think is rough. Right. Well, and and you know he the same old. I don't know the same old, but no matter what wedding dress it is or where you're getting married, it's still a one shot deal. You're wearing it once. Yeah. Oh, especially if her plan is not to have kids, so it's not like she's gonna pass it down to her daughter. Right. Right. At least his yeah. plan is that. Yeah. So we kind of leave <laughs> yeah. it there. Well, maybe she could pass it down to Elise, her stepdaughter. That wouldn't be weird at all. That would just be completely natural, not awkward for anybody. Just oh, gosh. straightforward. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, who do we have left? Alex and Josh? Alex and Josh. That's Anyone the last else? one. That's it? Oh, okay. I think so. Yes. So Alex's parents come to visit, and they're so excited. Oh, man. I loved it. I loved Alex's dad. I actually, I really liked him. Alex's dad, he was pumped. Man, he was pumped. Yeah. Yeah, he really was. But uh, before we can relax, we have to get all, like, the weird stuff out of the way, which is basically their concern about her newfound religion. Um, So they Googled Mormonism. Yes. And, and, of course, when you Google Morganism, the first thing that comes up 
because that's how the internet works, is polygamy. And they're not about that at all. Uh, understandably so. I would also not really be about that if I found out my daughter was... If I had actually thought my daughter was... I thought that Josh's parents were pretty cool about it. Um, because they... Yeah, they weren't offended. Yeah, they were like, eh, that's disappointing. That that's what you heard, but eh, that's not the thing. And, and it... So I don't think they were surprised that that's what Vlad no, and Svetlana No, I feel like they must heard. get that. Yeah, I yeah. think they do. Yeah. I, so it's there's... like you almost can't be offended because then you'd be offended by everyone. Right. And especially if you do a mission, like you have to hear it on your mission constantly. Oh, sure. Absolutely. They're nice people. Dirk likes them. Uh, he can't really understand them too well. Uh, he says they seem like a sort of normal family. Um so the thing that I thought was kind of funny, and I just feel like you just should, shouldn't do this. Just don't. <laughs> I think you should just play to your strengths, right? Sure. But instead, yeah. Dirk and family decides, hey, let's make Russian food to make them feel at home. And I understand the sentiment, but it's like mm -hmm. it's never going to be as good as their Russian food. So yes. I understand that you're trying to make them feel at home, but... Maybe they want to be adventurous and try Idahoan food. Uh, so potatoes? <laughs> Make some potatoes. They're Russian. They would love it. Yeah, uh, Russians love potatoes. Show them too. your That's local true. potatoes. Right. Yeah, they're all about their root vegetables. The, uh, at least me. I, I put it the other way. I would hate to go, you know, to some new country that I've never been to before, right? And have them serve, even if I went to Russia, Russia, Thailand, any of the ones people are from in this season and have them serve me like crappy cheeseburgers and pizza. Like, like, yeah, I would be sad about it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Play to your strengths, make the food that you know is good mm -hmm. instead of, I don't know, their cabbage did not look good. And I was confused about how they were cooking it too. Was it that a was, traditional Russian way of cooking it? Uh, that was just, I mean, I don't know. Cause I have eaten this with my, so my background, my my um, ethnic background is one hundred percent Irish and and English and Scottish. Mm -hmm. So everything, just all the British Isles. So like, yeah, random, just plain ass boiled cabbage is something that I definitely have had as a meal before. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm not saying that too because my mom is English. Right. Yeah. British mom. Yeah. I have definitely it. had cabbage plenty of times. But they had it in a little pot, and they were, like, squishing it down, and it was over a fire like they were camping. Yeah, that they just threw a bunch of sausages and cabbages into a, like, Dutch oven and put it on, to, on a fire. Yes. And that's, that's yeah. that was their meal. It's like... All right. Yeah. I've had that. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to introduce somebody with that meal. <laughs> like, no. Especially later that, day, later that night. Oh, my God. I, I don't, we don't need that. I know. My mom would always make corned beef and cabbage for, mm -hmm. what is it, St. Patrick's Day? For St. Patrick's Day, obviously, yeah. And, yeah, so we'd always have corned beef and cabbage, and she would let us have mustard with it. Maybe mustard. I finally, so I, yeah, I, so I, I finally convinced my dad that um, we can we can make Rubens, and that counts as being corned beef and cabbage, because sauerkraut is cabbage, so. <laughs> oh, gosh. Really? That's too yes. funny. So I'm like, Rubens count. Can we do Rubens on St. Patrick's Day? It's like, yes. Because we're the same way. It was like that. Just boiled corned beef and boiled cabbage. And it was like. Oh, no. I had that growing up. St. Patrick's Day, that's what we ate. And it was like, as a kid, you're like, no. It wasn't until I was a teenager that I was like, listen, this counts, right? <laughs> it is corned beef and it is technically cabbage. Let's do this instead. Too funny. Oh, so uh, they kind of talk about the polygamy and then um, mom goes with Alex to see the dress. And she was a little concerned because she thought it would be ugly if it was modest. But she was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I mean, there's I, I feel like a revealing wedding dress is very different than a revealing dress. Like nobody wants a super mm -hmm. revealing wedding dress. So if you say it was if you know, what I'm saying a revealing wedding dress would count as a modest regular dress most of the time. Whereas a uh, 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 oh, modest... I don't know. Can I point out uh, what's her face that we saw her belly button? Why am I forgetting her name? Cassia. Cassia. I said most. Exceptions to every rule. But I feel like when you say 
when you say, oh, it's a modest wedding dress, I think people pop in their head, like giant poof, full sleeves, like poofy shoulders. Like Okay, when I think of modest wedding dress, I guess I think of, you know, not strapless. Uh, mm -hmm. maybe like no cleavage and I feel like, and maybe sleeves and I, you know, cause arms to me, like they, that's not that immodest. So I kind of feel like just kind of covered up, up into your neck. That's kind of how I see modest, okay. you know? And so I feel like there are some nice dresses that are modest where you're, you know, you're not strapless. You have mm -hmm. like your what am I thinking of your cleavage covered up like right. I think there's plenty of nice dresses sure absolutely that fall in that category sure but yes maybe mom was thinking of what you were thinking like full sleeves uh, yeah like turtleneck full, turtleneck exactly yeah <laughs> yeah yeah That's what yeah I'm right so I did like uh, this. Okay, he's so at I, his bachelorette party I did like the party. something we skipped. When, when Svetlana oh, yep. first got to Idaho, and it, it, I wanted to mention this before we moved on, <laughs> they mm. were driving like from the airport, and she was just like, "Is it all just temples and churches? I, is that yeah. it?" Yeah, <laughs> she did. She's like, "I've never seen so many temples." <laughs> yeah. So uh, Josh is at his bachelor party, and oh my god, he looks so young. Mm -hmm. He looks like a little kid, and I mean, this little kid is. And this is what they were doing at their bachelor party: eating pizza, playing video games. Exactly. Like, oh my god, you look like That's, a little kid. Right, and yeah, because we was playing video games with his younger brothers too. But yeah, that yeah. pizza and video games bachelor party is. Oh, he looks so young. Does not help the age thing. No, it really doesn't. So. Uh, Vlad, he's talking about Russian bachelor parties. He's he was like, like, nope, mm. there isn't pizza and video games. He's like, we do more drinking and yeah. we have more fun. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Vlad. That's what right. Vlad says. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep, more fun. So then Alex is at her bridal shower. I wouldn't really consider it a bachelorette party by any means. It's more of a bridal shower. It was a bridal shower. I agreed. Right, and so she gets a gift from Grandma. That was the cute... I thought that was so adorable. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, it's funny because Grandma <laughs> seems to think that, you know, she's given her something spicy. I know. To spice up their wedding night, right? <laughs> Alex opens it up, and it's like the most Grandma nightgown you've ever seen. <laughs> she was like, ooh, I was thinking, like, you know, this will make things interesting on your wedding night. It's like, uh, it's, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it was... Literally a full coverage, like, yes, even co shoulders covered, full yep. nightgown. <laughs> that was right. And grandma said, I think it's going to make, make their bridal night wonderful. <laughs> oh, grandma, you're like, so cute. Uh... <laughs> oh, grandma, grandma, so cute. I like that she tried, and I like that her effort was just that. Like, this is really racy. And ooh, yeah. <laughs> aren't we aren't we naughty? Look at here? how sexy this is, right? <laughs> Except Grandma would never use the word sexy. No, course. no, no. Of course not. Of course not. I actually think I think it was the color more than anything else. She was like, "It's pink." Did you see that it was pink? Hmm. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Grandma. <laughs> Seems like everybody's drinking in Russia, according to Vlad and Alex. So uh, yeah, it's Russia. That's. That's like what they're known yeah. for, isn't it? Right, right. I think they're number two. Are they number two? I think Czechia is the most drinking per capita and Russia's second. I believe, I guess. I'm I, I mean, I, don't they say the reason why is because one, cold and two, depression? Yeah, like there's nothing else to do. But that's not right. true about that's not true about Czechia, but like, you know. But that's where those are literally the two places Alexandra Alexand Alexandra lived. So, you know. Yeah. Sure. So Alex was saying, you know, like, it's cool to meet an American and live in America. Like, that's what her friends all think. And I was like, right. uh, I, I think Josh is adorable, uh -huh. but I don't think they had this kind of American in mind. Oh, no. They were thinking about, no. I, to be honest, I think when most, I would guess most of her Russian friends, when they heard American, think L.A. Like, they think yeah. Hollywood. They think Or New like, York. Yeah, either L.A. or New York, and I was I would shade toward L.A. because I think they think Hollywood, think movie stars, sure. and then the secondary thought would be like, or maybe New York, like, and then and then third would be Miami, and after that they would be like, what? There's 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 more of the country than that. You're like, yeah, a lot more. 
Yep. Vegas, maybe. They would think of Vegas. But Possibly. But if you've ever been to Vegas, that is not the place you want to live. No, it's a visit town. Definitely. definitely. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But they wouldn't, never, they wouldn't even get to, like, Houston, let alone Rexburg, Idaho. Oh, gosh. Houston. Oh. <laughs> It feels like you're wearing a like a hot, wet towel over your face in Houston during the summertime. It's like oppressive. That's the entire United States south of I-40. I don't know if you're specifying Houston. It's so oppressive. That's, that's yeah. Charlotte. That's Atlanta. That's like in <laughs> Chattanooga. That's the entire south. Oh, that's why I can't live there. <laughs> I enjoy California. It's good all year round. So, uh, but mom likes Josh. She thinks yeah. he's a good guy and he's wonderful. And it's like, yeah, Josh is endearing. I really like him a oh, lot. Yeah, he's a good dude. Like, he really is. It's just, yeah. I mean, the question, the open question is whether or not she could feel like a full life in Rexburg. Like, or if she's going to miss yeah. too much. That's that. It's not about him at all. Like, she could right. absolutely be happy with him. I think that's the whole episode, right? That's the whole episode. That is all of them. Okay, so... Who do you have as student of the week? Um, so, okay. I had, by process of elimination, I really didn't want to give it to anybody. I, don't want to I know, either, I agreed. It was tough. Either there was glaring flaws with everyone, or they just weren't in it very long. Yeah. Like, you know, Melanie mm-hmm. DeVar, like, just in it way too short to, to justify it. So, so I gave it to the person who kind of took everything the most in stride um, and didn't freak out. And, you know, and that was noon. Yeah, especially considering Kyle did not give her the full story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought it was kind of difficult as well uh, because I feel like it was either kind of neutral, like Josh and Alex. I mean, you know, sure. they didn't do anything particularly good. So just kind of based on that, I s- picked a fringe character again. And where's my fringe character? Oh, Elise. Elise, my fringe character. I felt like she was really supportive and open-minded, you know, especially considering that you can tell she has reservations and hesitations and concerns, Mm -hmm. but she's befriending Nikki because she knows that Nikki needs a friend. Right. She knows she needs someone her own age. And so I appreciate her making the effort because she loves her dad. Mm Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Or at least I, like I assume it. that's why she's making an effort. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Dunce. Now this one was, there's yep. lots. This is hard for the other reason. Lots so to choose many, from. Right? Lots to choose from. So many, right? Too many. Where are you going to go? My Dunce. And, and I know that there was many to choose from main cast, but. Yes. Lauren's friend, Sarah. <laughs> is the worst. Oh my goodness. I was going to say her too. Yeah. <laughs> she's the worst just for like showing up being judgy and being like, I don't give a shit what you think. I'm going to do what I want. Get the hell out of my face. And like, and then I, know, uh, right? I just ate her the whole way around. Like no consideration for anything larger than what she wanted to do in that moment. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, fair. Uh, so my dunces this uh, week Ooh. go to the moms, the moms. So specifically Fernando's mom. Who okay. acted like a child when uh-huh. Carolina was there, and Kyle's mom for just not being on her best behavior, considering she hasn't seen her son in ten years. Mm-hmm. Like this is the reason why, right? You haven't seen him in ten years, and you're almost given like a second chance, and you kind of blew it. Yeah, because even Kyle, Kyle yeah. said that he was like he was kind of excited to see her, and then like three minutes into it was like I want to go away again. Oh like, God, yeah. So the moms. They were not well behaved. Uh, So my life lesson, life lessons, um, is, and it it has to do with Kyle and Noon, but also a couple other ones I'll talk about, is you have to get people prepared for what's coming. Like, you can't blindside someone by introducing them to your alcoholic mom and not saying they're alcoholic. Like, you have to let people know what's going on. You have to let... And the other one that kind of, it, in lower stakes, you have to let Nikki know that this beach is going to be really crowded and it's going to be three hour <laughs> yeah. drive. You got to know. I don't like it when people are find themselves in the middle of situations that they are ill prepared for because the person who put them in that situation didn't prepare them. Right, right. Okay, so my life lesson is with uh, Fernando and Carolina and it has to do with don't leave 
or have in your possession anything from your ex. I don't know. Maybe it's easier for me. I'm someone who very clearly has an idea of what doesn't belong in my house. And that's usually when other people's stuff is at my house. And so if someone's stuff is at my house, I know because it's in a special spot because I'm going to throw it out or try to give it to them. Just throw it out. There's no reason for you to hold on to any of your ex ex's stuff for your current partner to somehow stumble over it at some point and you're like caught off guard. Just throw mm -hmm. it away. Burn it. I'll right. let Angela. Right. It, burn it. I like burn it because if you burn it, then production can't get it and sneak it back into your house. <laughs> True. Because I feel like they would. <laughs> they definitely would. Okay. So any programming notes? So we have one, we're probably going to do one more episode of the classic where we're going to cover the last two episodes, which are episodes nine and 10. And then episode 11 yes. is the tell all, which tell we're going to throw in with those ones because tell alls are always boring. They never actually, yeah. like they're always on for a half hour and I have like 10 tell minutes nothing. to talk about. Yeah. It's tell nothing, tell very little. So I'm not expecting, I'm not high hopes right. on that. So, but after that, we're going to, um, kind of take a pause on doing classic episodes for a while because we're doing our other podcast on Love After Lockup currently. Yes. You should watch it if you don't watch it already. It is a hot dumpster fire train wreck of a show that, you know, it's good times, good times. Well, yeah. good times and sad times, but... <laughs> Interesting times. There's, yes, there's definitely been some depressing stuff as of recent but mm -hmm. worth worth checking out there's definitely some interesting characters on the show for right. sure and then after you check it out you can listen to us talk about it yes uh and then also just real quick note also since we'll be wrapping up uh season three uh we will also have some power rankings and right. uh we'll also actually take some time to update ourselves on what all the couples are up to so we can find out spoil ourselves on what fernando uh -huh. and carolina what the status is right right because i'd be curious i don't know i don't know we'll have to find out yeah all right so we'll do all that next week uh and we'll right. that's the only episode we're gonna have next week because there's not a new episode on on sunday true true don't be sad it's nothing to do with us right not our fault and it's tlc it's not us. All right. Okay. So we'll talk to everybody then. Okay. 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 Bye. Bye.